Hey guys, so today I'm going to be going over some very basic nutrition tips um, and covering flexible dieting as you can tell from the title. Alright, so I'm going to start off by saying that I am not a nutritionalist. I have strictly just learned this information from years of experience kind of messing with different things. I've been flexible dieting probably like the past two years, maybe three years or so. Um, and I feel that it is the most effective diet for my body personally. Um, right now I am doing the keto diet, which is very low carbs and high fats and high protein. But um, I typically don't recommend that. The only reason that I'm doing it is because um, the coach that I'm going through for my men's physique bodybuilding show, um, that's how they do things. So I'm just, you know, I'm open to different suggestions and trying out different diet methods. Um, but if you're just doing a regular you know, you want to lose 20, 30 pounds in X amount of time, then I would suggest doing flexible dieting. So those who do not know what flexible dieting is, flexible dieting is a very, there's a very basic concept, but inside that basic concept, there's a lot that goes into it. So the basic concept of this is that um, you can eat whatever you want as long as it fits your calorie uh, intake for the day, whatever your goal may be, whether you're trying to put on size, whether you're trying to lose weight, or whether you're just trying to maintain where you're at, uh, that's where flexible dieting comes into play. And um, I mean, you can do it with any other diet methods, but flexible dieting is the one that I see work the best because it's not as drastic as some other diet methods. Um, so to get started, I'm going to kind of go over what um, you know some basics and this is really going to be for basic very basic beginner people who do not have a big fundamental understanding of nutrition um, and I'm hoping that you guys learn a little bit from this video so what is a calorie a calorie is a unit of energy that your body needs in order to function so how many calories should you be getting per day well that's a loaded question because it depends on your height, your body weight right now, um, what your goals are, a lot of different things. But before we jump into kind of how to calculate what you think your goals should be and everything, um, I'm just going to cover some more basics. Um, so I have this little cheat sheet right here, as you guys can see. So as you see on here, um, all of these calories um, are all of the different macronutrients. That's what these are, fats, carbs, proteins. Those are macronutrients. And then you also have alcohol in this category as well. They're measured by grams. So uh, one gram of fat equals nine calories, one gram of carbs equals four calories, one gram of protein equals four calories, and then one gram of alcohol equals seven calories. Now you're never going to see, if you do drink alcohol, you're never going to see a nutrition label on the alcohol. Well, I'd say nine times out of ten you're not going to. But the rest of these you can find, I'm just going to grab a quick little illustration. All right. So we got peanut butter. This is a good one. So you can find the nutrition facts on almost any food that you have. And then you just kind of have to learn to read these on here. So as you can see from there, this has 16 grams of fat. This is per two tablespoons. So serving size is very important um, to be monitoring. But uh, peanut butter is like the reason I like this as an example is because most people don't realize how much one serving of peanut butter is. It's like this much. It's really not much at all. Uh, so a lot of times people will just, you know, eat a little bit of peanut butter and it can be four or five servings without realizing it. Well, just by eating those four or five servings, you're getting a nine, 190 calories per serving times the four or five that you're having. So um, this kind of just shows you everything that is in the peanut butter as far as 16 grams of fat. It does break down the fats, what kind and everything. I'm not going to get into that today. I'm just covering the basic macronutrients. So 16 grams of fat, you have 6 grams of carbs, and 7 grams of protein. Now the other things that you're going to want to monitor, especially if you're a little bit older in age, um, cholesterol is very important, and um, your sodium intake. But for somebody who is either getting into being active, or um, this is kind of more so tailored towards people who haven't had you know, heart problems, things like that. If you have Check with the doctor before you start any major diet because that's very important as far as your health of your body. Um, so anyway, so that covers the main macronutrients, um, otherwise known as macros. That's what, um, if you ever hear the term macro, that's what they're referring to. So as you can tell, nine calories, a lot more than four calories, obviously. So higher fat foods are going to be higher calorie, like always, because they have more calories per gram of fat. 
So you can get fats a couple different ways. Um, I'm just going to break down each one. Fats are mainly either in oil form or solid form. Um, oils are strictly, um, you know, oil. You can get coconut oil, you can get um, vegetable oil, canola oil. All of those are made up purely of fat. And then, and peanut butter has that in there as well. It has um, oils. And the way that they get the oils, it just comes from different things. Um, for instance, peanuts, if they grind down peanuts and everything, there's some oil that comes out of there. And that's why peanuts themselves are so fatty um, and other type of nuts. The other way is solids. Now solids you're going to get mostly from foods that you eat. Um, chicken is very, very lean, but um, if you guys ever buy chicken like in the package from like Walmart or Albertsons or anything, you'll notice like the white fatty parts on there. That is the fat. That's going to add more calories to the chicken. What I always do if I'm making chicken is I just trim off as much fat as possible um, and then you kind of toss it aside. But if you're having foods like steaks, there's a lot of steaks that are lean, such as like a petite sirloin. They're pretty lean. They may have, you know, per six ounces or so, they're going to have probably like, I don't know, seven or eight grams of fat. But there are some steaks where like, such as a New York strip, where they have a lot more fat along the edge that can have like 20 grams of fat. It really is just something that you have to learn the nutrition labels. That's very, very important. Um, if you're trying to get into diet and exercise and nutrition. We're going to move on to protein. So protein, you can get a few different ways. And these are not all of the ways that you get these. These are just the most common that I see. So for protein, I have protein powder, meats, and plants. Uh, Plant-based protein, this is where you see a lot of um, like vegans and uh, vegetarians and stuff. They get their protein by eating plants and different things of that nature. Um, otherwise, you know, meats, um, you can get it from dairy, you can get it from uh, produce or uh, yeah, things like uh, chicken and eggs and all that stuff kind of fall in line with meats. So um, otherwise, the protein powder. Now, a protein powder is specifically there to supplement your diet. Um, you don't have to have a protein powder, but for someone like me where I'm eating 300 grams of protein or more, 350 a day, um, it's almost impossible for me to eat that much meat or plants, like to get that from those sources. So I do have to have a protein powder, which is just a supplemental source. That's why they call it a supplement. Um, I always recommend a protein powder if you are um, really focusing on putting on mass, if you're trying to build muscle, then protein powder is very, very helpful with that. Um, but again, it's not a necessity. If you are getting a strong diet full of uh, meat and dairy and different things like that, then you're most likely going to get enough protein for your body, depending on what your goals are. Um, moving on to the last main macronutrient, carbs. So your carbs are pretty much broken out into two main categories, sugars and starches. Sugars are going to be any candy, um, pretty much anything with sugar in it. You guys know sugar. So you can get sugar from candy. You can get sugar from fruits. You can get sugar from a lot of different things. Fruits are very, very high in sugar. And this is one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that uh, people will have like these big fruit smoothies and think that they're being really healthy. Well, that fruit smoothie could have more calories and more sugar than a candy bar. There's a new Pepsi commercial I saw that Pepsi actually took shots at um, Naked Juice because Naked Juice has more sugars than a Pepsi does. Um, and you guys are probably thinking, well, yeah, but Naked Juice is made from fruit, so it's automatically better. Yes and no. So you have more of the micronutrients, which are going to be your vitamins and minerals and all of that that are built into the fruits. But as far as a calorie is concerned, you are getting the same or more calories, so you will gain weight. Or, you know, I mean, I can't say you're going to gain weight depending on how much you're eating, but it's going to be more calorie, um, more calories in that naked juice than there are in the Pepsi. So no, it's not perfect. I'm not telling you to go out and drink a Pepsi, but um, I am saying that if you're going to choose one or the other and you're specifically looking at weight loss, then you're going to want to choose the lower calorie items such as a Pepsi. Um, and most people right now are like, what? No, that's stupid. I'm shutting off the video. Well, <laughs> I mean, I hope you don't, but that's pretty much the basic of it. Um, and then starches, you kind of have 
um, breads and you know tortillas, all that kind of stuff that have starch in them, that's also carbs. So uh, carbs are pretty much the main thing that most people eat, especially here in America when you're having you know hardcore diabetes issues and overweight issues. It's because people are eating massive amounts of carbs and carbs can honestly play more of a role in weight gain than fats can. Um, they both do equally, but it kind of depends on what your diet looks like. But for instance, carbs, um, right now I'm on a low carb diet. I'm only having 110 grams a day and I'm used to about 350. Um, so right now it's very hard to find things that don't have carbs. Even a peanut butter where it's really high in fat and protein still has six grams of carbs. Um, so you kind of have to just look at the nutrition facts and determine what is going to work for you. Um, the last macronutrient, or it's not a macronutrient, but the last um, thing that is covered under macros is alcohol, seven calories per gram. Um, alcohol is very hard to track, so I typically, I just stay away from it, but if you do go out and drink, there are ways to track it. I'm not gonna get into it in this video. I know if you Google it, you can find ways, um, but I'm not a big firm believer in drinking alcohol, so I'm not gonna get into that. Um, Okay, so uh, the next thing that we're going to kind of talk about is going to break into how you should calculate your goals and your calories. So your body needs X amount of calories in order to maintain your current body weight. So when you are at this current body weight and you're having X amount of calories, let's say um, for me, I'll just use myself as, as an example because I know my body well enough that I can kind of talk about this. So my body, I am six foot three roughly and right now I'm at 196 pounds um, my pretty much off season weight is about 200 pounds um, but um, to find out how many calories my body needs to maintain it's a lot of trial and error you have to eat x amount of calories for let's say a week straight and you're going to notice if you're gaining weight staying the same or dropping weight um, if you're noticing you're dropping weight and you're wanting to gain weight you need to up your calories so there's a lot of um, calculations that go into this, but I'm going to kind of tell you how I do it first, and then we'll actually get into the mathematical side of things. Um, I point down because I have my notes in front of me. But, but as far as my calories go, um, my maintenance calories are about 3,200 calories, um, roughly. That's about how much I need in order to eat every day to stay where I'm at, not lose any weight. Um, you can call me a hard gainer. That's what the term is because it takes a lot of calories for me to gain weight. I have a fast metabolism and I'm tall and um, I've always been really skinny. I mean, if anybody's watching this that knew me back in high school, I was like 100 and I don't know, 150, 160 pounds at the same height. Um, so it takes a lot, but if you're consistent with it, you can gain your weight and grow, you know, grow muscle and get a uh, higher body weight. So if I'm at 3,200 calories to maintain my weight, that is what I'm eating. I'm staying at the exact same weight and that's just me wanting to, you know, I go out and have my lifting session and then I go to work and my day-to-day, -day, everyday stuff that I do, um, I come and I measure, or I weigh myself and I'm at the same weight every day. If I want to gain weight, I have to eat more calories than that 3,200. If I want to lose weight, I need to eat less. So how much less, how much more? Um, here's where a lot of people go wrong, is to diet and to lose weight, a lot of people go out and they go just crazy and they cut their calories. Like for someone my size, 3,200, and they cut down to like 1,500 calories. Are you gonna lose weight? Yes. Is it healthy? No. Your body needs, your body still needs calories, even when you're on a diet. Your body needs calories in order to survive. So you need to slowly drop it and figure out what's best for you. Um, the general goal or the general rule of thumb is if you want to gain weight, you up your calories by 500. If you want to lose weight, you drop them by 500. So let's say you're at 3,200 or for me, and I drop it down to uh, 2,700. That's going to be my 500 minus calories. I'm at 2,700 calories and I'm going to do my same day-to-day -day functions. I'm going to go through the day. I'm going to lift. I'm going to go do all the normal stuff, I'm gonna track what I'm eating, I'm still, I'm gonna be hitting that 2,700 calorie mark, and I'm gonna be weighing myself. And when I'm weighing myself, I'm gonna be keeping track. So if I notice after a few days that I'm still the exact same weight, then I'm gonna realize there's a problem, and I'm gonna to need to drop the calories a little bit more. That's where it's all give and take that you really have to decide for yourself, um, and you really have to stay consistent with it. Because if you're eating 
2,700 calories one day and then you're going back up to 3,500 and then you're going back down to 3,200 and then, or yeah, and then back down to like 2,400 and you're just all over the place, you're not going to get an accurate weight. So this is honestly one of the hardest parts about starting a diet is being consistent with how much you're eating because you need to do it to a T so that you can understand if your body needs more calories or less in order to maintain your goals. So here, let's use this as an example. Let's say you think your maintenance is 3,200 like me, um, and then you drop it 500. Well, you notice that you drop um, like five pounds in a week. That's a lot. That's very, very excessive. Like you may be thinking, yes, I'm dropping five pounds in a week, but that's very, very excessive and your body is going to start holding things a little bit different. So it's going to be like, well, now I'm, you know, I'm not getting these calories here, so I'm going to need to save on some of them so that I can eat them later because I'm not gonna get them later. Um, so your body is going to know what amount of calories it needs in order to function and or in order to drop the weight. So as you're dropping the weight, then you're gonna start seeing results. Um, and if you get to a point where you plateau, that's where you, let's say you're going down, 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 all of a sudden for this entire week, you're not dropping calories at all then that's when you can start doing different things. You can either drop your calories again by a little bit, um, or you can start incorporating things like cardio. Um, cardio is specifically a tool to help you lose weight. It's not a necessity to lose weight. It's all about calories. That's the main thing I wanna drill into your guys' head. It's all about calories, and cardio is specifically there as a tool. So you're basically using that cardio to chisel down some extra fat and some extra calories so that you can continue to eat but you're gonna burn them off later. Now, I don't want you guys thinking, oh great, well then if I'm at 2,700 calories, I'm just gonna eat an extra 500 calories and then go and work out. Like, yes, you can do that, but you still wanna find a middle ground for your calories. You wanna find what is gonna help your body lose weight while still getting all of the key nutrition that you need. Um, so how do you track calories?